Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, we're about to get treated to a whale of a heavyweight title fight. I feel that the casinos have badly mispriced this fight and have underestimated Chris Ariola. Ariola right now is a double digit underdog. Just understand this is high risk, right? He's a double digit underdog and he's limited, right? Ariola gets hit way too much, right? He's been stopped twice for crying out loud, right? He was down in his last fight. Right, okay, fair enough. But he's fighting a heavyweight champion who hasn't shown me that he has a back foot. Right, that he knows what to do on his back foot. Let's also say too that Deontay Wilder went 12 rounds with Bermain Stavern, but Bermain Stavern can hardly move. Right, going the distance against a Chris Ariola is a different ball of wax entirely, right? I think the public is going to get fooled by this a bit because Ariola's last two fights have gone the distance. I'm just telling you, if Ariola gets inside, in fact, let's not say if, let's say when, when Ariola gets inside and applies the pressure to Deontay Wilder, I'm not sure if Wilder is going to have any answers right now the lines are so out of whack right now that even the prop on Wilder by KO believe it or not is greater than 10 to 1 that's how ridiculous the lines are I don't see this fight going the distance but you're gonna have to be provocative on the hedge right I want on both sides of the aisle to have a chance at a stoppage. So the bet I'm recommending is Chris Ariola simply to win the fight. Folks, you're getting up to 15 to 1 odds on that side of the ledger. That's how big an underdog he is. I'm saying to take Ariola to win the fight, then what I need for you to do is to be provocative on the wilder side, take the under. Right, because I'm guessing they have to give you better odds on an over/under than the ridiculous, you know, 12 to 1 that I'm seeing right now on OddsChecker.com. Right, take the under, and then you probably want to buy some rounds. Right, up to let's say Wilder round eight. Right, I think somebody is going to get stopped in this fight. I don't see it going the distance. I think Chris Ariola is a very live underdog here. I don't know if he pulls it off and wins the fight, but I certainly know he's not a potted plant, that he's very dangerous. And if he comes in with the right mindset, if he realizes, look, this is a shot at the heavyweight title, he's exactly the kind of savvy veteran who's going to not be overcome in the moment, who's going to look at Wilder and realize that Wilder is limited. Right? He's also going to realize that while Wilder has a long right hand, that doesn't mean that Wilder is going to have any power if you get inside of it and are able to dodge his left hook. Right? Let me say this too. I need to have people be a little bit savvier. You're going to read reports that Ariola failed a drug test, right? Understand, Ariola failed a drug test for marijuana. Let's get real here, right? This isn't Maldonium. He's not, you know, taking some drug that's going to improve his stamina. Come on, right? No, this is marijuana. He's, you know, taking marijuana um, to take the edge off whatever. Right, that's very different from athletes relying on PEDs to enhance their stamina or their muscles. Right, they're NFL players right now. 
who are publicly saying, in fact, I believe science is telling us, that marijuana use might actually help you with concussions. Right? If you want to give Ariola the benefit of the doubt, that's an argument that can be made. My point to you, though, is when you hear that Ariola has not once but twice failed marijuana tests, right? Just understand that to me, that's very different from hearing that Alexander Povetkin, for example, used to be on meldonium, right? Very different. Let me say something else, too, about Ariola. Ariola reminds me of Buster Douglas, the guy who took Mike Tyson's title, right? Gave Tyson his first loss. Ariola is savvy. He's talented, right? He has the skills. When you watch him, just like when you watch Buster Douglas and you're thinking to yourself, man, Douglas has a good jab, right? Why hasn't this guy been a champion before now? Right? When you look at Ariola, Ariola has hand speed. Ariola has a pretty good right hand. Ariola can put his punches together. Ariola can actually operate deep in the pocket. Right? The problem Ariola has had, just like with Buster Douglas, is an uneven effort. Right? Caused in part by you know, let's say an inability to always devote himself fully in training camp, right? In other words, Ariola is one of these guys who's talented, but who, like Allen Iverson, doesn't like practice, right? Sometimes it catches up with him. He's in the ring and you can tell, you know, this guy didn't exactly have the best training camp. Right? A popular game is to guess Chris Ariola's weight. Is he going to come in this fight under 240, committed to you know, training hard and stuff like that? Or is he going to show up over 260, which he's done in a bunch of fights? Right? Let me point out, too, right? he's not alone in having problems like this at heavyweight. Right? Because unlike the other weight classes where you actually miss weight, in heavyweight, you could be a little lackadaisical, right? People are really looking at the scale for educational purposes, informational purposes, right? Everyone makes weight at heavyweight. Let me tell you, go through Lennox Lewis's history. You're going to find out that there were some moments there where Lennox Lewis wasn't the most diligent in training camp and stuff like that, right? That first Haseem Rockman fight, right? Lewis, by his own admission, wasn't really a dedicated camp member. Now, to me, what makes the Buster Douglases of the world and the Chris Ariolas of the world tough, tough, tough opponents in world championship matches is the fact that they realize it's the opportunity of a lifetime. They have a higher ceiling than most. If there's a fight where Chris Ariola is going to come in prepared and ready, it's going to be this fight. Now, I know he came up short against Vitaly Klitschko. Hey, Vitaly, to me, is a Hall of Famer. He's an all-time great. Right? I know he came up short against Bermain Stavur. In my opinion, and I guess this will be controversial, Bermain Stavur has a back foot game. That Deontay Wilder who beat him does not have, right? Stavern doesn't have foot speed, but he has one of the hardest punches in boxing. And when you run in on him, he knows how to operate on his back foot with his back against the ropes. I don't believe Deontay Wilder does, right? I think if you get Wilder on his back foot, I think Wilder is going to be unsure of himself, right? Let me say this too. Let's look at the Eric Molina Wilder fight and keep in mind, Ariola beat Molina earlier. What I want you to do is look at Molina's body work. Molina gets off a lot of clean shots to Wilder's body, doesn't he? 
Now, you know, boxing's like poker. You don't want the other guy to know you're hurt. So you can imagine, Wilder's standing there, gets hit with hellacious body shots, right? It's like, and Wilder's, you know, looking unimpressed. Understand, however the guy looks, you and I know inside the guy's thinking, damn, oh, 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 oh. right? But he's a professional boxer. So he's not going to wince on every punch. He's not going to bend over. He's not going to let the other guy know he's hurt, right? He could have broken ribs. He's not going to let the other guy know that he's hurt. My point to you is simply this. A savvy vet who's been in the game a long time, who's fought for the heavyweight title before, right? That's who Chris Ariola is. I'm sure he's looked at films and he realizes Wilder on his back foot, not the same fighter, right? Wilder to the body, that's open. I can hit him. Right? Let's get real, too. There's only so much Wilder can do to hide. Right? Wilder now is in his 30s. Wilder's a tall man. He doesn't know how to hide his upper body right now. He's not going to learn it for this fight. Right? So, I see the Wilder people working. They wanted someone who was going to do some of the things that Alexander Povetkin does. Right? Ariola can throw punches in bunches, just like Prevetkin. Right? Ariola can come in and collapse the pocket, just like Alexander Prevetkin. I could even see someone in Wilder's corner saying, hey, look, we beat Bermain Stavern. This guy lost to Bermain Stavern. Right? But don't kid yourself. I personally thought, I, hell, forget thought, I still think. Alexander Povetkin beats Wilder. I don't want to diss Wilder too much, but let's just say the styles here don't quite match up. I don't think Ariola is as good as Povetkin. But I think Ariola, whatever the casino says, has a chance. Certainly has a much better than 1 in 15 or 1 in 12 chance. Right? So. You need to be open to the possibility that Chris Ariola comes out like he did against Travis Kaufman. Look at the first minute and a half of that fight. If Ariola comes out, jumps on uh, Wilder, and if Wilder has no answers, and what do I mean by no answers? If Wilder either tries to trade with him without his long right hand, right? Because Ariola would be inside of that. If Wilder isn't able to clinch Ariola, who almost certainly is going to be bouncing, right? Ariola's going to come in, he's going to start unloading the kitchen sink, then he's going to be bouncing, which makes it harder to grab a guy, right? If you see Ariola, who himself is tall, Right? If you see Ariola able to get low and get to Wilder's body, and if Wilder doesn't know how to hide his body, right? if Wilder looks surprised by Ariola's energy and aggression and isn't able to keep Ariola on the outside with a jab, you're going to know that you're watching a competitive fight, not a mismatch. Right? This fight is priced like a mismatch. The value side is with Chris Ariola. The bet I'm recommending, since I don't believe this fight goes the distance, right? I know both of these guys have gone several rounds and stuff like that, sure, right? Ariola's last two fights have gone the distance. Okay, great, right? The styles here don't match up, right? Ariola has the potential. He's not going to let this one slip away, right? The bet I'm recommending is the underdog, Chris Ariola, to win the fight. Don't fool around with knockout props. Hell, the casino's giving you double-digit odds already. Let's not get too greedy, right? It's Chris Ariola to win the fight, hedged with the under plus you buying some rounds on Deontay Wilder 
you know, you want to have the first eight rounds on Deontay Wilder. So let me give you an example. If the over-under is, let's say, four rounds, let's say it's an Anthony Joshua type over-under, four rounds, then in my opinion, you want to buy rounds five through eight on Wilder by KO. So this way, if Wilder wins by KO, because keep in mind, you're getting such long odds. You're getting like 12 to 1 on the Areola side of the bet. So if you get any possible return on the Wilder part of the play, then great. You know, you can hedge it that way. Let me say this. If the fight makes it to the ninth round, I think the title changes hands. I'm just going to bluntly say it. Because that'll tell me that Chris Ariola has survived the rough part of the fight. And look at Wilder's work, right? The rough part of the fight is the early part of the fight, right? And all I'm saying is if Chris Ariola makes it to the ninth round in a competitive fight, and he's just a few rounds away from the heavyweight championship. I think he's going to kick it into a gear that, in my opinion, Deontay Wilder won't have in the later rounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me say this, too. Let's be clear here. Right? If the champion wins by KO in the first eight rounds, I know I'm going to have a lot of people here online saying, Oh, Dwyer, you said that Chris Ariola was going to do better than he did. That's fine. That's great. I'll take the heat, but I'll also be taking the casino's money. Right? Because I'll have Wilder for the first eight rounds of the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Ariola to win, hedged with Wilder in the first eight rounds. You could get that by the over-under, right? You want to take the under and then make up the difference between where the under leaves off and Wilder by KO in the first eight, right? So you might have to buy, let's say, the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth rounds, right? If the over-under is reasonable, let's say it's six and a half rounds, then you only have to buy two rounds, right? The set the 7th and 8th, right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.